Let us pray. Father, we thank you for yet another day. Father, just pray your blessing upon our time together. Reveal yourself to us, Father God, and just let us understand your precepts deeper and deeper, Father God, that they will become, Father God, our first nature, Father God. We realize that no matter what we do, we can never be totally complete in you. But we ask right now, Father God, that you will give us revelation of what we talk about tonight to edify us, Father God, that we may be, Father God, better representatives of you on this earth and that you will be constantly, continually glorified in our lives, Father God, by the conduct, Father God, by the evidence of the word that's in us. May we, Father God, receive it and put it into practice that all may see and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may unmute. We're going to follow the same format uh, of the reading and then the discussions and of questions after the portion. Uh, and uh, just ask it once again that you either raise your hand. For those of you that don't see, you got to use the mechanical hand, or whatever they call it, though, deal. Um, so it's your preference, though. So uh, please, all comments and, and questions are uh, most welcome. Okay. That being said, let, let's turn to James. We're in James, and we're going to chapter four. We may finish chapter four tonight. <laughs> That's a good possibility, but hey, whatever God ordains. John chapter, uh, James chapter four, and we're going to look at, I want to use as sort of a segue here, uh, James four, verse 10. I think we talked about it last Wednesday, but it, it, to tell you the truth, I got so excited and everything was so good, I can't totally remember. But I want to emphasize, start with this as a point of emphasis and understand that everything now uh, up, up through 12 will fall under the subject of warning against worldliness. And we did, James was talking about that, how he was admonishing the uh, the brethren, the scattered believers that were all over the world, wrote this letter here about them, uh, you know, how to conduct themselves in the world that God would be glorified, that they could actually show their faith by not what they said, not just what they said, but what they actually did. But now he's writing these instructions, the Elder John kept on instruction to do that, and these uh, instructions are still applicable today. See, the, the fact that the former church has not substituted or taken away our responsibilities to be what this word says. We can't say, I can be any kind of way, but uh, you can come to church with me and then somebody over there, the pastor show you what's right, or the deacons or the elders, they'll teach you what's right. I'm just going to bring you there. No, we, we are responsible to show Christ in our lifestyle at all times. That's our witness. It's, it's how we live. You can't get away from that. So... Uh, and that's why Paul uh, keep renaming the guy. That's why James, I think, really emphasized this a lot because th this is very key. Because up there, once someone that says they're Christian show you a bad example, and then you try to make up for it by taking them to church and thinking they're going to see something in you there. My first image, you know, the first impression is, wait a minute, you go here and you're like this. I I'm not going to transition into receiving anything else. Because your conduct has already put a barrier. Your conduct has already put something in me, gave me some revelation. And I'm going to think everybody's like you. I'm going to think they're saying one thing and doing another. So getting inside that congregation won't necessarily benefit some people because I've shown them a bad example. So I'm going to take them to church and don't pay any attention to me, pay attention to the good people. Over there. Now, that's not the way it works. Thank you. Look, you got to go and be the church to them. You got to go and represent Christ. So, uh, He's talking about worldliness because if we're called out, we're not behaving like the world. So James 10 reads, humble yourself therefore in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And I read through that a lot of time I get to read through and go like, you know, it's a word jump out. And I'm like, was that there before? Did I just read through it? And I'm guilty. I don't know if others are. Because when we talk about humility, it says to humble yourself in the sight, James is telling us to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> That's something totally different from presenting ourselves as a humble person. A lot of times you hear people say that they're humble and you know, they may be, they'll be low key and, and that's almost like a catch word phase there. But there's no guarantee that that person is humble before the Lord. 
Because this is in the sight of the Lord, not in the sight of men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, we can't ascertain whether someone is humble. We, we don't really have that ability. We can see certain characters that we may display humility, but really the only way we're gonna know if that humility and the humility in us is true is if we are humbling ourselves in God's sight, not just using some platitudes or character traits to appear to be humble to people, if that makes sense. I don't know if anybody, I hope I'm not confused anybody. So true humility has to be done. The, 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 the uh, basis is the sight of God's law, God's uh, presidents, God's dominion, God's method, God's standard is what determines our humility. <laughs> because I can try to be humble, I can say the right things, you know, like not raise your boy and do things about that. Uh, and, and hopefully I don't, this might just be for me. But we, we don't want to think that humility is something that we are able to conjure up on our own. To be truly humble, that means we bow ourselves the Lord's way, to God's way, and we don't try to have our way. We bow ourselves humble, you know, beneath God, we go uh, yield ourselves to God's way and we don't try to have our own way. Which means what I think about what God says doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't mean I can add to this, take away. So to understand that worldliness, we can get to where we misrepresent God in so many ways uh, that we become can, can become ineffective. So, you know, I don't know if anybody else, maybe this just impacted me and I'm just sharing with you my meditation. But that humility comes from bowing ourselves to God's way, living that way all the time, thinking that way. And it says, well, and he will lift you up. He will elevate you. And that doesn't mean he's going to make you like some great bishop or something or the other. You're going to have a, you know, 40, 50,000 people in your church. That just means what God is going to do because we humble ourselves before in his sight, he is going to, with our humility, he can elevate us above the world system, which means the situation you're going to be in where people may hold a superior position to you, but they are going to be subordinate to you according to God's will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't go in, we don't go in and take charge, but by God elevating you, you will get favor over people that have more worldly authority over you because you live God's way. Mm -hmm. Good word. You know, and I hope that is making sense. That means we don't have to contend. We just keep bowing ourselves because I think all of us, we open it up, we have testimonies of having been in the workplace in some places. And seeing things where people are deliberately doing things, and because and, I've got some, I know my wife had some, doing that, but then at the moment we be still, I'm mean, like, I'm not going to continue. I'm just going to turn this over. I'm going to keep living the way God happened to be, irregardless to what goes on here. And then you look along, boom, this evil boss is gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. This person here will be all of a sudden gone somewhere. You know, sometimes the people might get promoted out of that position. Things happen with God, but he elevates us. Because he don't want, doesn't want us stressing out over worldly things. So that elevation is kind of like an airplane rise above the turbulence when you're flying. You know that they go to a cruising attitude to get out of the clouds so they can have smooth sailing. Same way God would do for us spiritually. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have challenges. We have to understand that humility is a powerful thing. So if you see yourself as having been elevated in a situation, if you trace yourself back, it is a direct results of your humility towards saying, okay, God, you got this. I'm not going to try to devise ways to contend with this. I'm going to just continue to do what you tell me to do. Because then the results Amen. are up to God. So that's probably a long opening. I don't know if anybody got any questions or comments about that. I don't see any hands. But that's an important part there. So humility is important. No question or comment? Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to finish with the uh, warning of worldliness, verses 11 and 12. And it reads, do not speak evil of one another, brother. <laughs> I didn't think you had to write something like that, but obviously you had to. 
He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? Now, when I started looking at this, and y'all bear with me, uh, when you start to look at verse, in verse 11, because now I'm getting more astute to the you know, things that my wife do, and actually the Jones and, and Pastor Dave, to really delve into certain key words. You know, it may just be for me, maybe others, because you can read that, okay, do not speak evil. And I guarantee you, we go around, we think evil, everybody may have a different view or uh, uh, a perspective of evil. Because me, I'm thinking I'm actually, evil is really maybe like lying on somebody, just saying nothing really bad, bad about them all the time, or mischaracterizing them. Well, it's sort of that way, but, but evil, I, I want to, you know, the root word for evil, I want to, uh, it's found on it. This is out of verse 11. And listen carefully to what the root word for evil has to use here means. And I find a new word out every time I do this. The word evil, the word here in the, uh, with the Greek is from a word called traducer. T-R-A-D-U-C-E-R. T-R-A-D-U-C-E-R. That's the equivalent root word for it. And a traducer is one who attacks the reputation of another. So we speak evil, that means this person that is speaking evil is attacking the reputation of another person. And you see where well, it takes on a whole different president when you're talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. When you speak evil of them, you're actually attacking their reputation, but it goes even further. Attack their reputation by slander or libel. That's what the enemy by is. slander or rival. Now the difference in these the legal words, I looked those up. If uh, the you know, so obviously these things were going on. So by slander, that means you are speaking something that is attacking another person's reputation. And a lot of the news shows just keep popping ahead because they all do it. By slander, by speaking. But here's the other, or libel. The only difference in slander and right libel uh, legally is libel is something that you write. <laughs> Mm. about someone that is liable is evil who is an attack so the first thing that popped in my mind when i read libel is, is some of the posts on social media that we see Ooh. alleged christians they're totally talking about the same subject but it's it's like a war of words mm -hmm. so james is saying right now if you are speaking evil if you say something that attacks somebody's reputation or if you write something. Mm -hmm. And we can take that in social media if you even put something on there that's a great cause of the person said they are. And I go on Facebook and da 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 da, type this little deal about it, or put some kind of little symbol in there that degrades, attacks their, their, uh, their reputation in any way. Mm. Yeah, and that's liable <laughs> from God's way. And as he's talking about that speech about brothers, we are not, James is saying, you are not permitted to attack each other with words or written or uh, images. Mm -hmm. Good word. Good yeah. word. And it says, he who, let me tell 11, do not speak evil to one another. He who speaks evil, and that's what he's saying. And judges his brother speak evil of the law and judges the law. And that's talking about the law. It actually referred back to the Mosaic law. So now not only when we are speaking, think about this. Think about, think about this. These people are in the body of Christ. And, and you know, nobody, I'm not the judge, and I don't think anybody here think themselves the judge. So you're in and you're out. I, you know, I like saw you do this, so you said that. So now you're out. Okay, you're good. Night. No, no, it's not that. All of us in the body of Christ. Okay, so when we speak evil, if someone speaks evil, I'm not gonna say we because I don't, someone speaks evil of someone that's in the same body. Now you're speaking evil of the law. 
you're saying I'm good, but this person's not. That's that's what you're saying. That was a major problem with the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Well, they said they're good, the rest of y'all are not. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. See the power of that? Okay. And we have that, that spirit of Pharisees. You see that a lot. Because you think, okay, I determine the law. I keep the law, so I judge the law. And if you don't keep the law the way I said you should keep the law, then you're not keeping mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. Okay. In other words, I redefine the law. The law is what I said. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Guy, you know, just make stuff up. That's what we're doing spiritually. We like saying, okay, the Messiah law don't really apply because you don't follow all this. I do. So you um, you're not you're unworthy of me. See that 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 is evil. Mm, 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 mm. Because it says you judges you, you judge your brother. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speak evil of the law and judges the law. See, not only that, now I have you know I just use myself as example. If I do that, now I set myself up as I know the law better than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to be like me because I know what the law is. I know it backwards and forward. I know all of them. I know the Mosaic law. I know all these other laws. I know all these whatever. I don't remember the exact number of the other ones they added. I know them all. And now I'm going to judge you according to the law as I see it. <laughs> yep. All six, 613 of them. Yes, Ms. Pat, Brother Tony. So that goes back to chapter three when we were talking about the tongue. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we can end up speaking evil of each other and not even be aware of that we are speaking evil by God's definition of evil. Because us modern Christians, a lot of times we can be guilty of conducting ourselves according to the world mores or, or the world's example and without really understanding the ramification. Like, it's okay to talk about. No, it's not. No, it's not, because now I've set myself up as I'm the keeper of the law. I decide what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. You didn't keep the law the way I said it's keep, because I said it's this. You're supposed to do this <laughs> this way because I do it this way. Yes, babe. <laughs> I was trying, I'm looking for a scripture here, because when you did that definition of evil, even in your speak, speaking and even in your writing, and this just came to my rock, what Sister Pat just said. So even if I write something, Mm -hmm. yep. about somebody and I'm professing that I am in in, in the in the uh, uh in the body I'm really writing it for myself because we are joined we are connected right so when I and concerning the tongue what sister Pat just said it was a scripture that your tongue is a, a ready writer I think it's in Psalms 47 Psalms 45 or one of those songs he said uh, the tongue is a Oh, I like to go to the scripture because that that what came to my spirit was our tongue is a ready writer. Mm -hmm. And whatever we speak at times, that's what's being recorded. We think not. If you go all the way back to Genesis, all the most I did was just speak, and there it was. Right. Mm -hmm. So his tongue is a ready, a ready writer. Mm -hmm. So when we get to Psalm, I was trying to find it. I'm gonna digress. Yeah, I'm gonna find it, then I'll come back. Okay, but but you're right, and understand that you know, even though it's correct, now don't don't limit it because it could be writing. You could do a post, yeah, that attacks somebody else's reputation. See, instead of edifying, you're trying to tear down. There you go. If you think careful about it, you can hear these sermons every time. That this is my own personal view. Now don't please, I'm recording my own personal view. One thing that I detest hearing is alleged pastors giving alleged sermons and they're quoting a bunch of statistics and some things that they read somewhere that pertain to one people group and certain behavior and trying to document that using statistics that they read in some book. Oh, you're on, vilifying whatever group because you're trying to look at statistics and justify a certain behavior. Now oh. you're casting a reputation. Well, you vilified me? I didn't do any of that. See, that's not that that is, and you wouldn't see it. I know they say, oh no, that's kind of all right. That's what that's what's written. That could be accurate. They could that could be accurate. But why am I gonna get in here and try to say, okay, all the you know, the, the blue people over there, these blue women are 
more subject to have abortion than anybody else based on these statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say these purple people over here, most of the purple males, they end up in jail because the prison property state, the prison population consists more of purple people than other people. Mm -hmm. See, that could be an accurate statement, but you're still attacking the reputation. Because now you're grouping people together and you're putting a derogatory uh, attitude toward them. Uh, you right. statistics in a way to taint one or to attack the reputation of a whole group based on some statistics that may or may not be right. Thank but they you. use that all the time. And then you call yourself, I'm trying to minister. You need my help to get you out of so, No, you can't help me get you. Just, you people like you, the reason we in this situation. <laughs> But you ain't helping, you're destroying. My God. You have to be very careful about it. We can't edify, we just need to be quiet. Me mm -hmm. personally. If it can't be edifying, I need to remain, need to mute myself. So we have to be careful because that really, I imagine the world is laughing at what's called the church. Mm. But a lot of things that we do is worse than what people in the world do. Mm -hmm. It, it really is. You start thinking about some of the stuff, and I'm not criticizing anybody specifically. But we got to be aware of the, the consequences of the way we conduct ourselves and the no. impact. Like, so, like you're saying, we impact because we are that triune believer uh, person. We have the character of God. We speak things, and even when we write things, we create things. Mm -hmm. It comes from a spiritual to reality. So now, once you created a fence in somebody, you can't undo that. Now you, you determine you can't unring a bell. Mm -hmm. So now we're supposed to be edifying. Now you're saying something that's attacking me. Well, wait a minute, hold up. I can go out to the world and be attacked. Yeah. You're supposed to be in the church. I'm getting attacked in the body <laughs> by their brothers and sisters. This ought not to be okay. Questions are coming, y'all. <laughs> I'll go on and on. <laughs> any, any others? Any? So we have to understand it because what it's saying, we judge the law and we become. The actual, well, I'm going to read on, and you're going to see that, but say, if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Mm -hmm. So actually, when we do that, I'm still in verse 11, when we do that, we have not become a doer of the law. And understand, we, we don't do the law, now you're in sin. <laughs> I become a transgressor. <laughs> what I've done is, <laughs> by my judgment, is created my own law. <laughs> and since I'm not doing the law because I'm not adhering to the law, I have become an outlaw, but I'm trying to hold attacking other people with my precepts. Well, I'll be just like Paul, <laughs> just like well, Saul when he was. Now, that is wrong. I had to wipe this movement off the face of the earth. If you don't believe in the old way, you got to go. Because the way I understand it is, there's no Christ. This is it. Y'all are blaspheming. This new way is. But see, that applies to the principle. <laughs> Anytime we are so rigid on something, we're saying, we, oh, you can't do this or that or the other. Now I become a judge. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking, now, now I'm not even keeping the law. <laughs> yes, brother. I, I found that scripture. It's in Psalms 45, verse 1. And I'm just going to read it here concerning the, the tongue. Uh, okay. It's dealing with the Korah. Uh, um, he said, a, he said, a wedding. It's like a wedding uh, a song. He said, a wedding song. He said, my heart overflows with a noble theme. I recite. In other words, he is reciting something. He's, he's speaking something here. I recite my verse for the king. Now he said, he said, my tongue is like a pen of a skillful writer. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So when you gave that definition of, of the people speaking evil, you can speak evil. You can even write it down. Even oh Lord, that's a double right there. When you write it, you thought it. When you thought it, now you're speaking it. So you kind of covered. You done. You just took out probably a whole nation. Hallelujah. That's the scripture. The word of so God is saying it's, 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 it's evil. So we're yeah. speaking evil. Yeah. We're speaking evil, and 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 again, I don't want to reemphasize. Keep reemphasizing this, but. Brothers and sisters, hopefully your change, your our way of thinking is becoming more in line with God. Well, I'm not saying you're in sin, but a lot of times we don't well, me personally. I mean, just said me, I do like you about that. I said me. I don't always say I necessarily think about things in the perspective of God. Mm -hmm. I usually mine's like 2020. I'm like, oh man, I done messed up again. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said it that way. 
I should have been quiet. <laughs> Thank God I'm maturing. But if we start to reflect and honest with ourselves, we will discover that there are, we all can be prone of acting in a way that's outside of what God says, mm-hmm. outside of God's way. And if we don't use that as a principle, we will get accustomed to it and will not be subject to change ourselves. Because it says right here, if we judge the law, we start making up certain things because, you know, you get into some, I hate to get into particulars, but some of the stuff I be hearing, man, is ridiculous. And I mean, you got heated arguments over, to me, just it's not crazy stuff, it's insignificant stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't mean any offense to anybody, but me, I do not have time to debate with anybody about what day the Sabbath is. I'm just going, I'm going on record for saying it. I have no incentive. I have no inclination to debate. Because when I read back to Genesis, when God said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Well, then in Exodus, I'm sorry, not Genesis. Keep, he, that was no calendar. He didn't say it's on Wednesday is the Sabbath. Keep Wednesday holy. He didn't say that. He didn't say it about Monday, Tuesday. He didn't say it about any days. But you get into discussions, and I'm not trying to start an argument with anybody. I'm just trying to say things when we looked at God's perspective. He didn't use a calendar to distinguish what day the Sabbath is on. Why should we? Because I can't really, because I really got to go back to what God said about it, me personally. I don't know. Y'all help me out. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me (laughs) either right now or later, because why am I going to say this is something that God didn't say that it is? Mm-hmm. To the point, some people will, will criticize people that don't do things the same way they do it. Oh, you go to church on this day? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm not going to get into particular domination. Some of them, they make that big deal. Because I actually remember one person that's all about that day. And it kind of freaked me out. I'm like, no, it's not. You don't eliminate Christ. You don't eliminate everything. The shed blood, the resurrection, none of that means anything. You just saying everything revolves around this day. You see how you get into that? And now, if you don't adhere to that day, now I'm going to criticize you <laughs> because you don't adhere to this day, this law that I have. Let me read 12 because I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm going to stay there. There is one <laughs> lawgiver <laughs> who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you? to judge another. Mm. There is one lawgiver. Yeah, amen. So none of us have the right, none of us have the ability, in regards to what we may think of, what some group may think, to modify the law to our taste. Because I think that God put us on earth to enforce his law. He didn't. (laughs) Because he's able, only Mm -hmm. the almighty, the most high, is able to save and to destroy. So who am I to pronounce judgment over people? Now, I got no power. See, I would be subject to the same law, the same position. That's why I want to read the power back to uh, 10 with that humility. Because guess what, when you start to judge, you're not being humble. Because God is thinking, well, wait a minute, you in my arena now, what you doing in my seat? Hmm. You're trying to put on my robe, put my gavel down. Get out of my seat, take off my robe, put down my gavel, <laughs> and get down there in the prostrate position before me where you belong. <laughs> now I'm the paraphrasing there, I hope we understand that, but that's what we do. See, we really think of that. <laughs> But sometimes I remember how my sons used to be when they were younger. <laughs> they would like to like try to walk in my shoes. And I think it's natural. Anybody have kids, they probably did. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But there's one thing. <laughs> Their feet wasn't big enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. They walk around like two or three years old. And they trying to walk around on a 10 and a half. <laughs> feet not big Same enough. thing we try to take over God's position. God like, nope, I got this. You're not big enough to sit behind this chair. You're not strong enough to lift this gavel. You are not holy enough to wear this robe. (laughs) And you do not know enough to try to make proclamations of what's right and what's wrong in other people's life. 
Mm. Says, who are you to judge another? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I got to remember that. I like that. Who am I? Still think about that now. I'm not grown enough to judge somebody else. Wow. Questions, comments before we transition to the rest of them. Mm. Y'all like me, let it soak in. Oof. Like that marinade into a good steak. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's kind of powerful when you think about it, though. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else tonight light I, I want us to leave, and I want to leave with a, a really definition of what evil is and what uh, true humility is. Truly humbling ourselves. Not that little fake humility and stuff. It is actually being subjected, placed my will below the will of the most high. Matter of fact, in the, in the purest essence, in the strongest essence, you would tell what Christ said. Christ said, look at that. You know, I only do and say what my father tells me to do and say. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I don't do stuff on my own. I'm not operating on my own here. That's word. That's word. To the point that when the disciples said, well, show us the Father. Christ said, wait a minute, you've been with me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. I'm his direct representative. Mm -hmm. I act and do. Everything you see me do is directly from him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like, you don't, he don't need to show you anything else. He's showing you me. Now, think about it. We believe we get to that point where we can boldly make that proclamation. If you want to see God, follow me around. <laughs> well, if you don't want to see God follow me around for a while. <laughs> but think about that though, because I, I know a lot of you, and I would, you know, not to puff y'all up, I would be confident in people being able to observe you and seeing a large major of God here on earth. Mm. I know y'all known a lot, most of you, you know, close to 20 years, some of you over 20 years. But that, that's where we have, that's what this letter is about to get us in that position where our conduct carries so much weight and it's so in line with the word of God that people will see us and see the Father. Wow. Amen. Wow. I mean, that sounds lofty, but it's doable. Now, will we do it 100% of the time? Me, no. I don't know if you, any of you can make 100%. Let me know because I need help. But uh, I, I, I would be comfortable uh, with making that proclamation and taking the rebuke when I missed the mark. But that's what, that should be our goal. To boldly say, like, I don't need to take you to church. I don't need for you to meet the pastor. I don't need blah, blah, blah. We don't need to sit down and have a Bible study, show you. I see you, I'm coming over the, the you know, Read this track and blah blah blah. Call me back. No, let's just interact for a while. Just watch me. Watch what I do and say and how I do it and how I say it. But yes, I I wanted to say in what you just uh said came to my uh, my rock uh, uh when we our mentor over in Germany uh Pastor Sumler, remember him when yes. he would uh say you reminded me that when you was telling us that when. People look at us, they need to see the Messiah. They need to see him. Yeah, that was a proclamation we made every Sunday. Every, every, every time we came together, he was saying, he said, Lord Yahusha, stand in my body. Speak with my mouth. Mm -hmm. And what, what was that? Think, um, think. think with my mind. Mm -hmm. Let the world. When I said, when the world looks at me. When the world looks on me, they see you. That thing right. was powerful. That was our proclamation. At a every, every time we yeah, met, like sure was. So years. that just came to my spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, he was an uh, unusual man. You know, in a, in a very good way. Mm -hmm. But he, he knew the key. Because he wasn't into all this church stuff. Mm -mm. No, like, nah, he was not. If, if we're not acting, if, we, if nothing is impacting us to become something, then we waste our time. If you're at KCM, you're not becoming something, yeah, I strongly recommend you go find somewhere where you can. He <laughs> because would if we're not, we're wasting your precious time. Yeah. 
you have to sit down. Constantly yeah. going through this becoming process. And awesome. as a side, Barbara, that's part of that, that, that transformation. That's why Romans 12 1. Because awesome. it's in prayer, and correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, English teacher. It says renewing, wait a minute, be transformed. It's present participle. Is that it? That means it's ongoing. We never yes. arrive. Like yeah. every day, I got to be subject to be renewed, to renew my mind. <laughs> every day, we have to go through the same process. Hallelujah. I don't care if they can put robes around me and all kind of cold clones and put on that big hat like the. That, never mind. Y'all stop. <laughs> You oh. never all this little layered and getting these like merit badges in church and stuff, and you get to wear that you know, you get to sit over. That's madness. <laughs> That's no sign of transformation. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it it's simply that that and uh, the part I love James, it's simply this basic: am I doing what I know God would have me to do? And I'm not just giving lip service to it, I'm actually doing it. I am becoming. Yeah. Like Can in I James say so? 1, John 1, 14. It says, in the beginning with the word, the word was God, the word was with God, and the word was God. And then I think in John 1, 14 said, and the word became flesh. Think about the concept of that. The word became flesh in the body of Christ. He became the embodiment of the word of God. Yes, 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 yes. That's what we are to be. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a Christ or God to become the embodiment. Once we humble ourselves before him and make his word the chief thing, now we Woo. become the world, the word in flesh. Mm -hmm. That's it. Jesus. And when you start thinking, oh, Lord, I, I'll stop. I'll just help me. I'm going to start preaching in a minute. Because if you start to look at Ephesians 4, the responsibility of the five-fold ministry is not really to build a church and keep adding people to it. It's to mature those people that to the point that they don't need a teacher. He said to come into the fullness, full knowledge of Christ. That's the word. The church is not to get more people there. It's to get people to the point that they don't really need to be taught. You gather church to celebrate with your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because that's the role of it. Your people keep going to church and they never change. That church not doing it. They need to close down. Come on. They Come need on, to bulldoze it. <laughs> that building is not there to keep people in kindergarten for the rest of their life. <laughs> Spiritually. Ooh, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I just want yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say when James was writing these when he was writing this this book here to the to the to his brother and the tribes, can you imagine if 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 uh how can we as the body, how can we as believers to get these instructions, follow these instructions that James is writing to his brethren? That's the only way that the world gonna see him through us because you know that's the only way they're going to see it i'm not saying that he we got to be a representation of the word that becomes what flesh, flesh. Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong we're not a god we, that's not what i'm saying but the way we act the way we talk the way we speak the way we treat one another he was telling them and giving them instructions that this this is things that you need to look out for your tongue going to get you in trouble. Your mouth going to get you in trouble. All this stuff going to get you in trouble. But you need to make sure that you are not the judge. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Who Lord, I've, I've, I've been delivered tonight. Hallelujah. Again, thank you. <laughs> I'm fat. Oh, hey, man. Anybody has questions or comments? So you like me, it's just like, uh, I want to go on, I'm not going out there. But it is an interesting, interesting principle of the ability that we have. And, and again, it goes back to, I think, what Sister Laura was talking about, how we have to unlearn some things. Because I'm not necessarily criticizing church, and, and it can be full of people that are excellent, people that are saved, and it's what mm -hmm. I know going to heaven, but yeah. you're not taught the fullness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I start listening to y'all know me. I think some of the elders probably know. I'm like, man, this is gonna sound like blasphemy to some people. 
I'm like, this is your, this is your song now. I went to play, man, your pastor's insane. What is he that fool talking about? What Bible is he reading? <laughs> you know, in some way, I'm not saying it's a bad, I don't know, you know, try to be a rabble rouse or anything of that nature. Matter of fact, I'm still on the journey like everybody else. But I do know one, one thing that we have to reach the point that we know what we know. And then we got to know what we don't know. All then right. we got to be subject to understand, okay, I got this, I got, oh, I didn't quite get that. Oh, that's what that means. I got to stop doing this. I got to start doing that. <laughs> and it's not like you come to us with some checklist, okay? You know, the Holy Spirit will tell us, you need to stop doing that. You need to start doing this. You need to mm -hmm. stop doing that. You need to start doing this. Hallelujah. And as you mature, guess what? It's going to constantly change. Yes. So that's why one time it's not like the cut a cookie cutter. We know everybody so do the same thing at the same time. That is that's wrong. But you understand there is a process, a transformation process that we have to go through. Because you have to you need to look back to the disciples. I don't take up all the time. Look at look at Peter. Peter denied Christ. I'm not picking on Peter, but I would say I probably. I don't know, he brave when I was. I think when I saw them drag Jesus off, uh, I've been decided, I don't think I've been around that close proximity. I'm like, man, where's the road to Africa? I'm getting up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would. Just to be honest. I'm not going to, oh, well, you know, took Jesus. I'm here to, you know, take me too. No. <laughs> that's not even, that's against human nature. But it was part of the process because when Peter went down, when he saw that and he became aware, he just thought reflecting on the things that he saw and heard Christ say. You know, it broke him. But he acted in the flesh. We all do that. He denied him three times. Nope. Yep. Yep. He's like, no, I'm not going to take me and beat me too. Self-preservation. That's a strong motive. But we got to understand that that process of using that, uh, trying to use that as a process to show he went from being somebody that denied Christ to one of the most powerful apostles there was. Amen. Amen. I mean, I've seen some depiction read some stuff by Peter. Peter was walking around. I mean, he didn't get like because for Paul was just like the rock star. He just went places and but one was no better than the other. Peter was that rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That went from being unstable to the nine trying to, you know, like, no, it wasn't me. I wasn't there. I didn't do that drive by. I don't know who what Pookie and them were doing. I, I wasn't even in town that day. <laughs> So next thing you know, he's boldly standing out there for everything. And he was the one they, that the other pastors came through. He was the one they came back for that stability. So what I'm, I'm using that to say, no matter where we are in our process or journey, there's always room to get stronger and better. And why? As Peter became Hallelujah. a rock, we all can continue to become rocks. And now I think about the rock, we become those stronger rocks. Kind of like reinforcing your foundation. Yes. Amen. Because the storms are coming. Yes, sir. Only a fool gonna sit there and not prepare for the storm spiritually. Mm. <laughs> not try to build ourselves up. Yeah. Because one thing that I y'all let me talk, I'm gonna keep one thing that's really I find just inconceivable and I do not comprehend it at all is a whiny weak Christian. <laughs> Those two things should be mutually exclusive. You say you're a Christian and you whiny and you weak. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about certain situations people are in, but I'm talking about people that are spiritually act like they don't know anything. And anytime there's a situation in life, they want every, they want the world to stop. <laughs> Pay attention to them. Mm. To minister there to their needs. And please, I mean no offense to anybody here. We all we have needs. But there are some people that don't even make the effort. <laughs> and a lot can be out of us not doing this. So I'm not accustomed to growing. I haven't been challenged to grow. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to be like a baby. Good word. But I'm upset. I'm just going to cry till you put a pacifier ball in my mouth, spiritually. Mm -hmm. OK. That had nothing to do with the lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but when you start to read through this, we get empowered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By doing this, because God will <laughs> elevate above all these little cares of the world. God knows we didn't, we're in the Babylonian system. Yeah. He's still saying, you should still glorify me. Don't be focused yep. on the Babylonian system. Come on. 
Focus on what I've done. Focus on what I can do. Continue to make True. yourself stronger. And guess what? The, as we draw closer to God, that Babylonian system it starts to shrink. <laughs> like it's going down anyway. We, we tell Rev Revelation. So why am I going to be all upset about a system that's going to be obsolete? <laughs> Hallelujah. I would say one thing: when I take what you would have, what God would have you to take from the system, master the system, mm. in whatever way. Don't become part of it, but the benefits of it is ours. Yes, also whatever benefits, but that is not our source. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't rely on the Babylonian system because we're above that. We live Hallelujah. by a different set of rules. So now we, yeah. we are in a position right now since I don't have to worry about all these other extraneous things, the material things and trying to succeed. That's part of that humbling ourselves. You don't have to worry about it. You just do the work that God tells you to do. Your success is guaranteed because wherever you are is where God has put you. So why can't I be satisfied there? Why am I striving to do things that God ain't telling me to do? Why am I putting a list, you know, a limit or a bottom line? Why am I saying, well, God, God you know, I'm only making 100K. I thought I'd be making 250 by now. God, mm -hmm. like, no, are you starving? Is all your bills paid? Yeah, but come you know, on. Come on. You know, I, I only got this mid sized beamer here and I want a seven C. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know how we can get sometimes? Mm -hmm. Start comparing mm -hmm. ourselves to the Babylonian system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's a word. It's spiritually do that. And now we want to take steps to try to get it on our own. And it's not about the thing. It's about the attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're not coming there. Well, you see how all this starts to tie together. Let me read the rest because we got to finish. I'm going mm -hmm. to finish four. It's going to be my fault if we don't. <laughs> 13 through 17. I'm going to read all the way through. Ah, any questions or comments we will address then. Okay. First, James 4.13 reads. And this is a warning against self-reliance. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Verse 15, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, Come on. We shall live and do this or that. But now you boast, but now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Come on. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. See, James is like the hammer. He, he just he ain't that fancy, but he just drive the nail in. Yep. Sure. And when I look at this, it doesn't say to have not have confidence because confidence would be in God. That's why I think God took me back to verse 10 on the humility. So I don't think as, as believers, we ought to be confident, but our confidence is in God. We don't yeah. claim things that oh, I'm going to do this. I know I'm gonna, this is going to happen and that's going to happen because I've done X, Y, Z. Now I'm going to do this. This is going to no. <laughs> Yeah. And he simplified it there said, you know, we to know because if we humble, you, you will pray and he, he gives the, the way we should say it. Um, so we don't know. Because that self-confidence gives the impression that I've already figured this out and I'm getting this under my own power and strength. Yeah. And authority. Uh -huh. Amen. So would you consider self-confident pride? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, don't mistake that because, because as, as believers, we must be confident. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But not in our own strength, but in not in our own, not like I can do it. I can't do it. Amen. See, what happens that confidence, once as we become so assured of what God does, we do speak boldly. We may not phrase it that way because at times mm -hmm. I know you, and I don't get to claiming things that I know are going to happen. But, you know, that's, you get a revelation for God. It's certain, I guarantee you, if we go around, there are certain people they know. I should do this, and I shouldn't do that. God has already told me, do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. See, I understand that process is, is ongoing over and over. What Paul is, I mean, what James is writing is that 
we shouldn't think that in and of ourselves, I can make proclamation that's going to happen. Because actually, James said, that's evil. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're making yourself God. Yeah. Yes, Miss Pat Elder Barn. They were blatantly arrogant. They they had they said today or tomorrow, such and such city, they will spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. I mean, they yeah. were blatantly arrogant. They had yeah. it all planned out. And and where was the Lord in all of this? He wasn't. <laughs> yeah, they had they had a plan, and James just rebuked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he told them what he said, what they should say. But in 16, he said, but now your boast is your, now your boast in your arrogance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now you boast in your arrogance. And 16 says, all such boasting, all such boasting, not only these, anything, any boasting like this out of our selfish flesh, he says, <laughs> it is evil. <laughs> Oof. And a lot of times, and, and Excuse me. Yeah, if, if you're careful, just one thing I used to use when people were ministered, I, I like to listen to the pronoun, not to judge. I just that's just me. That's one of my idiosyncrasies. Because I found over the course of time people that repeatedly I I I I I when they ministered under the alleged anointing, I I, I, I turned thought tone them out. I'm like, home, oh, but you ain't nobody. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you real careful and you listen to the way people say things, you learn what not to, you know, I, I had that euphemism, raise shields. When I started hearing these selfish pronouns, I started like, well, I got to tune you out. <laughs> and I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm not basing on any particular person. It's just something with my way I'm tuned. It's almost like you can, you can sense when a person is really submitted and God is coming through them, using them as opposed to them just having a gift. <laughs> because one thing about things from the spirit of the Antichrist, if we are careful, it will be revealed. We just have to listen to the nuances. Because Satan can mark the true anointing real close, but he cannot duplicate it. <laughs> he can only imitate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we listen, we'll know that this is of God and that it's not of God. Is the hand still up over there, Elder Barnes? Or? Yeah, I just want to say that um, that, that is so powerful what it says here, that how you, you, you do not know what your life will be tomorrow. You, you know, we, you may say, I'm going to do this this weekend, I'm going to do this um, Monday, but you may not make it to Monday. You, you, you know, the, <laughs> The life of power and death is is in in the Lord's hand. So right. it's really um that's really important there to to understand that because you know it's it's all it's God Almighty. It's His choice what happens tomorrow and next year and all that. We can plan and pray that the Lord bless us and direct us what to do, but He's in control of it. Oh, absolutely. Because James does. He like uh where where did he do? 14. All right, in 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, Where do you do not know what will happen tomorrow? But what is your life? But a vapor. It is even a vapor appears mm. for a little while and then vanishes away. Wow. And he's comparing that to God. He's not saying that people are insignificant. In comparison to God, we're just vapors. Yeah, that's right. We don't have the power to manifest things outside of God, which again keeps taking me back to verse 10, humble ourselves in his sight, in his sight, his way, according to his way, not false humility, but truly submit ourselves to God's way and seek that all the time. Mm. Then he elevates us. Because he will be glorified. He is glorified by us being glorified. Now that's going to sound like blasphemy to some people. But when we are so submitted to him, he wants to put us in position. God likes to show out. We don't understand that. He doesn't like to show out in a negative way. But he likes to show out through his children. Think about your own children. Don't you get proud when your children do good stuff? Mm -hmm. We celebrate with them. 
It can be little things. We always celebrate our so why God is no different. He's the Father. He's the most high Father. So He wants to elevate us. Hallelujah. He glory upon us. Because the glory is not ours, it's his. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I submitted myself to so so degrees and I'm just a vapor. I really don't matter. Any glory we get, it's just a, a, a benefit. It's a, a mm -hmm. consequence of being in this position. It's a side effect of being submitted to the most high. Mm -hmm. So he ordered that and he does. He wants his children to be in a position to be enviable. Matter of fact, Hallelujah. He, 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 he told Abraham, like, no, I'm gonna make you rich. So they're gonna be jealous of you. <laughs> I'm gonna hook you up so the whole world gonna be jealous of you, Abraham. Mm -hmm. I got you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Guess what? That principle that like, never let just some favor. See, we, we understand, we understand that. And we we don't, you know, sometimes we get I, I hear you yeah, shut up in a minute, but we don't want to get so caught up in the church structure and all that or think that our glorification is only on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or Saturday morning, or whenever your Sabbath is at the church, and how it fit into the church hierarchy or what? No, that's lunacy. God is so much bigger than what goes on in any church. That includes KCM. Mm -hmm. you can't restrict them to that. God, glory just goes everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm through. I just wanted to say, I don't know, that just blessed my heart because that is so true how he wants to be glorified through his children. Mm -hmm. That just, it make you feel like a proud peacock, you know, that we, he want to be glorified through us. Mm -hmm. That when people do look at his children, they see him. And that's when they say, who, who is your God? Who is this God? Who are you? That's showing the glory of the most high God. He is so awesome. And he'll be, he's so proud. He loves us so much. Hallelujah. I said, oh, okay. Yeah, you're, you're right. And and on the side effect, I'm gonna close on this. We'll leave it open for a few minutes. Then back out in the comments. If not, we just open up a fellowship. If you I guess haven't been in the Middle East and not to pick on the Islamic people, the radicals, but if you notice, and this may not apply to everybody, you notice the is Islamic radicals when they talk about America as being a great Satan and all of this. They always point out the negatives in society, the negative behavior, the things in our society that we, you know, that the nation, that our system, this Babylonian system, allowed to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Now, me personally, I am not aware that they ever talk about the church. <laughs> they always talk about how our nation lives and they only really focus on the debauchery the evilness the ungodliness of the society mm -hmm. think about that because if there's more godliness there'll be less of this ungodly and then satan wouldn't have a platform mm -hmm. to pronounce judgment but sometimes you get to listen i'm like well man i don't like it but they ain't lying <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like, we allow almost anything. And I'm not saying any particular person, I'm not saying it was the church fault. It's just an interesting dynamic that they use those negativities. And that's what Satan would do to any degree. He's going to use that negativity to try to attack the body of Christ. And guess what? He's going to use negativities from people, behavior that's not even in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that some say they're in the body of Christ and they still do stuff that is subject to bring shame and disrepute to God's word. Mm -hmm. So you understand that the enemy is focusing on ungodly behavior, ungodly principles as an advantage. It's his propaganda tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the point you can get people to fly an airplane into a building kill themselves to strike at people they don't even know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So nothing else. I don't want to leave on a, a sad note, but uh it just we have a great responsibility. So hopefully, you know, I'll study in James and hope what he's doing to me is letting me know I cannot be humble enough. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
I'm a hundred percent all in with God's way. I still got some work to do because it says to know to him who knows to do good and does not do it. To him it is sin. I mean, to miss the mark. We miss the mark when we know what to do that is right and we choose not to do it. Mm. Just food for thought. Any last questions or comments? Yes, Pastor Dave. That's amazing. I, I really enjoy uh, studying this. It's a blessing to me. And, you know, looking at how he, you know, he writes to the, he writes this to the 12 tribes and the people that scatter about. But in that time, they were the people group that God chose to demonstrate his glory and to demonstrate, like you said, to show who Christ really was. And, you know, you look at now, you know, God called the church to do that. You know, we're that called out people group. We may be scattered, but God is calling the church to demonstrate God's glory, his love, his attributes, his character. And this is such a powerful word because, you know, you mentioned something a few minutes ago. And Pat said, you know, just it made, made me wonder, like, like the Pharisees in that time when Christ was talking to them. You know, you mentioned like they sub how people now, the tracks and everything, the church, the road, we substitute that righteousness and that holiness, which means, you know, really having an inward relationship, expressing to God. And now that holiness becomes our expression, which is God. But since we don't like to do that as the body of Christ, we love to substitute these other things which appear to be holy. You know, our roads, the way we dress, a certain sermon, the way our, our, our temple looks, the church building. And he's, he's really telling us, because he's speaking to us. This is written yeah. to us, the church. Yeah. You know, he's telling us, you know, you can't do these things. You can't substitute true holiness that comes from God, knowing God for these things. Because when you, but when you do that, this is what you're going to look like. All the stuff that you see that you've been talking about and everybody come out, you see all of that in the church today. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and, and like Sister Pat was saying, but all that appalling stuff, unfortunately, you see that in the body of Christ. We call that, and he's just telling us now, you know, we can't be like that. And if you like that, you got to get rid of that stuff. This is how you become godly. This is how you express the character of God. And it's a blessing me because just telling me, you know, I can never substitute the righteousness and holiness of God for things that I do. I can't dress up a certain way and speak a certain way, you know, do them like a Pharisee. And I'm walking around like a peacock. But there's no substance to me. There's no life. Right. Right. And unfortunately, you know, not a sour note, but if you look at the, the, the totality of Christians today, that's what you get. That's what you see. And he's just warning us, we can't be that way. Right. So I'm enjoying this work. It's blessing me. It's a warning to me to get my house in order, keep myself in check. And it, it's a direct word to us. And I know to me personally, and it's, it's a blessing. Amen. Well, that's, that's two of us. Yeah, because it, it does. Right, it, it, James, I mean, it brings revelation. Because actually, for me, uh, for everybody else, once I read through this, the thing I love about James is if I'm not adhering to it, and it's not because I didn't understand it. I need an adjustment. I need to adjust the way I'm thinking because it's nothing in here that's unreasonable or incomprehensible. It's not so deep that, you know, I need a PhD to understand this. No. It says, you know, right there, you attack anybody, another brother's reputation by what we say or write, that is evil. So if you want to know what evil is, then you just, if I did it, I just did it. So I'll launch into another, I don't want to say that. But we, a lot of times, a lot of believers can think things Satan is doing that's causing these problems, and Satan has nothing to do with it whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. I call it like an self-inflicted wounds. Mm -hmm. The body is attacking itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's like a spiritual cancer. And it's easy. It can be easily removed mm -hmm. by humbling ourselves and letting God direct. And well, I, I thought repeating myself. But it, 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 it is so powerful. And the thing about it is so simple and so easy. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have to crucify our flesh to do it. Mm -hmm. Andy, you had your hand up, Bo? 
Yeah, I, 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 it's, yes. not, it's not. I'm not going to be very politically correct with what I say, but James Amazing. makes me stuff. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> that's what, I like that's that. what comes. James make you check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. You just summed up the whole book in that sense. Sister Angie. <laughs> Because you're right, as Pastor Dave talked, a lot of times we can be guilty, you know, especially if people yeah. get in leadership. Yeah. Oh, I've I, I <laughs> been to many places, saw so many what I call clown shows, spiritual malpractice, <laughs> that I don't want to recreate. That. I'm trying to forget it, but it's, I mean, okay, but you're right, because we're not keeping the main thing the main thing. We substitute it with a bunch of glam. I call it the sugar high. Mm -hmm. It looks good and it feels good, but it's not good. Mm -hmm. I don't go to church to have a good time. I don't. I hear people, oh, yeah, we had a good time in church today. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that means absolutely nothing. But sometimes you need to go in there and you need to get beat down spiritually. Mm -hmm. You need to hear things that motivate you to change. Mm -hmm. Woo! You need to be That's word. Everything's all it right. <laughs> Grinning, Hallelujah. waving a Bible and talking in platitudes, no spirituality at all in it. You got like 40,000 idiot, idiots. Oh, yeah, 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 we're so happy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, y'all all going to hell. Okay. <laughs> okay, baby. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we've substituted too much and it's aggravating. For me, perfect <laughs> aggravating to see there's all this deception that's going on. Mm -hmm. And nobody seems to, you know, I wouldn't say nobody seems to know. But the word doesn't, doesn't support a lot of things that's done. It, it just mm -hmm. doesn't. I'm sorry, I'm going to get off the soapbox here, but it, it does. It's actually, uh, it's dangerous. Because mm -hmm. Satan, I know we got to be sitting back smoking a big cigar, a big Cuban. <laughs> oh, man, they doing them. That work for me. I ain't got to attack the church. It's self destructive Okay, I, I'm out. Okay, anybody else? Any more questions or comments before I stop? Very, go ahead. Bro. Very quickly, Pastor Ed, when you yes, said it, you said it frustrates you, but listening to this, you know, reading this and listening to what you're saying, I don't think it frustrates. It's like me; it grieves me. You get so grieved by what you see. Um, you know, you just get very grieved by what you see because you know what the word says, and you know if it's applied to our lives, it will change you. There's no way you can apply this word and it does not change you. It's right. Possible. It's just not possible. It's all powerful. And, if the, and in the church, where we, we're not, a, so many times it's not being applied and there's so many people that think they're right in the end era. Mm. And mm. That's a, that's a, that should grieve, oh. that grieves oh. me. Mm. <sighs> I know you got the clothes, baby. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So it's too much sin in the camp. Okay, uh, one minute. And, and, and that will go perfectly with what I'm about to say right now. And the only thing that's going to drive the sin out of the camp is the truth of the Most High's word. Because I do believe that we as the believers, we have had a pacifier in our mouth so long and we still put it on that pacified if anybody ever seen the symptoms that girl walk around with i don't know her name that cartoon she she pulls on that pacifier all the time that's maggie what i see the, like yeah. huh maggie in the symptoms. maggie yeah maggie I, yeah she always got that pacifier and so we as believe we got to stop it yeah we're gonna go to an assembly sometime and you're gonna be corrected you're gonna come out with band-aids on but you you this is these are things that we know that we need to hear if you're going to go somewhere all the time and you're going to get something that goes, who will come out like a butterfly? You need to check yourself because whom he loves, he corrects. Amen. 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 All right, I'm going to pray and we're going to start recording and we still have five minutes to fellowship after that. Father, we thank you for your word. Yeah. We thank you for your way, Father God. I pray for forgiveness of anything that said yeah. that did not bring honor and glory to you. Yes, Continue, Father God, to challenge us to grow in you, Father God, and to be that example, to be the light, Father God, to bring your glory on this earth each and every day. And Father, could you just continue to establish us, Father God, that we can boldly go. Yeah. And if anyone's in doubt of you, we can boldly proclaim to them to look upon us and what we do, and they will see you in our lives. In Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 Amen.